Hey guys, Rocky DA Productions here. Totally jacking off Brony General's thing because I think he's really going to appreciate this. So I went back to the salvage center and they're willing to sell me the monitors. No more of this forcing to the jar junkyard to be scrapped. I can actually buy them. They'll let me buy them. A dollar a piece. We got a Trinitron, a neck and a ViewSonic Professional Series PT813. This guy uses BNC video input, and if we look up here, I got a couple, that's right, a couple BNC to VGA connectors. Um, got another BNC cable there. Then we've got these Z-Band Blonder Tongue Modulator and Channelizer. I'm hoping that this thing will actually boost the RF out but I figured either way I'd grab them. Now, they have a bin in the back of the store where they don't sell stuff to people normally. You can go in the back there and pick through these bins, and it is 50 cents a pound, right? Yep. Yeah, 50 cents a pound. <sighs> and now I'm gonna have to pick up the phone. We've got a front panel out of a computer, which is gonna be used for the front panel of this guy. I still need to get a graphics card for, but it's a step in the right direction. And here in LGR Oddware, we've got the, uh, multi-directional clicker the stealth switch which interfaces through a combination of ps2 and usb it takes usb as an output i guess and ps i mean ps2 is an input and usb is an output i really don't know what's going on here so we got a sealed in package mono price remember my last running with mono price dvi a it looks like to component now this doesn't make sense Component has chroma red, chroma green, chroma blue, and in chroma green there's a luminosity and I believe a vertical sync signal, and I think it doesn't have a horizontal sync. Uh, VGA and DVI, neither one of them works quite like that. There's just a red, green, VGA has red, green, blue, horizontal, vertical. And there, there's no separate luma and chroma shit. Also, in the pickup, we got a lovely IDE DVD RW, dual layer RW, and RW with a different logo, apparently, with compact disc rewritable ultra speed. Pretty, pretty snazzy. Don't know if it works, but I hope it does. And this one, again, Bernie Adrenal might appreciate, is a Zip 100 Dell drive. Uh, it doesn't use a modern connector, but I can actually take the internals out and adapt it to fit a modern one, so... Uh, when I say modern, I mean, you know, that guy over there. So, the next portion of the video, we shall feed a signal to every monitor and make sure they are honky-dory. That's good. Uh, I don't feel any high voltage. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Here we've got a P991. That was an interesting degal sound. Yeah, I heard it here. I never heard. Good sign. Let's get her hooked up to the signal generation thing. I haven't done anything yet, but this is so sharp and so bold. It's unreal. The colors are beautiful. I haven't done anything yet. I haven't messed with any settings and I haven't optimized it for resolution. Oh my God, this looks good. So this thing has an amazing picture, zero burn in, and it has less options and I probably won't get much more options through Sony DAWs, but I'll have to try. But if we go under convergence here, which by the way, convergence spot on over here, little off over here, teensy bit off over here and I am not satisfied with the convergence over here the red and blue they're pretty out of whack over there yeah actually let's uh let's put this on a white grid let's put this on a white grid oh yeah oh, man it's perfect in the center a little off in the corner just so perfect for most of the display but then this corner is just a little bad actually you no know it might be because I'm on the fridge there's a little bit of magnetic field play in the fridge now I think about it so this might be the, the rest of it might actually look normal when I take it off, now that I think about it. Beautiful monitor. I'm so happy.
This it looks about as good as my new old stock tube. So, this does not have many hours on it. This thing does the coolest degauss ever. Let's see if the neck will work. This is uh, the ugliest of the bunch. I heard high voltage come up. And a lot of relay clicks. That's the test pattern? What? Also, this monitor might be very tired. We'll have to see how it warms up, but if it's that tired, it might go back in the dumpster. That's a really depressing picture. It might look bright on camera, but I mean... That LCD is making it look pretty dim now, isn't it? She's bleeding on us. She's bleeding on us. I accidentally pressed the reset buttons on the menu, and now it's adequately bright, but I can't even read anything. The camera's overcompensating for this. Uh, the camera really is not picking us up as it is. That looks way more normal on camera than it does in real life. I need something to reference this to. Oh god, I can barely see the test pattern icon. I turned the brightness all the way down. Apparently contrast is what does it. That is a weak, bleedy tube. Who knows, maybe it's not the tube. That seems awfully perfect when I turn down the contrast. If it is a tube, turning up the brightness will make that problem come back. Uh... Hmm, that's odd. It still looks good. I don't know what's going on there. That still doesn't have a very good picture, though. It's okay. I still think it's a tube problem. Uh, having the contrast at the maximum contrast to not cause issues. Um, and the brightness at the lowest brightness to where the black's still black. The highest brightness of the black still being black, which is right here. Uh, looks pretty bad. And... It's obnoxiously dark. Again, the camera's going to make it look better because it's doing that auto contrast stuff and it's not in a bright room. But if I turn the brightness up to what looks reasonable, we lose our black level. And it seems a little bit in the dull side. Now, if I could get inside in here and there would be a, uh, a bias control in the neck of the tube, I might be able to compensate for that. Alright, so here's an interesting thing. I turned the contrast all the way up and it looks fine, but I set the color standards different. So if we, uh... Yeah, the brightness looks great like this, but, uh... Yeah. I guess somebody's trying to use that RGB setting to boost the life of an aging tube. It looks pretty usable like this, actually. It's... It's not fantastic, but I, I, I could use that. I would not use it for image editing, but... I can use that, I can tolerate that. It's not obnoxiously dim, it's just getting there. I would like it brighter. Hey, I just had a massive problem in judgment and forgetting. My desktop's color, my computer's removing a wallpaper on VGA output for some reason, and the color is dark blue, and the color of that happens to be dark blue. If I go in the test pattern, the brightness is bright. This monitor's a lot better off than I thought brightness, so uh, I can probably boost the brightness without issues using the color thing. We're gonna play around with that. You know what I think this monitor needs? I need to get in the back of it and turn the flyback transformers G2 up a little bit. It's it's got a moderate picture. And hey, look, we're we're losing uh we're having the same convergence issues in a corner, a little less extreme. So I think the fridge is causing some of them. NEC AccuSync 90 revision 1A. NEC is a jerk about how they built this. The screw for the second grid is down there. I have to like basically wedge that transistor and that, I mean, that resistor and that capacitor out of the way to get to it. Um, which I did not want to do it at on, because my screwdriver is, you know, metal. Didn't want to short anything out. So it took me a couple tries, but now I got it right. That's 100% brightness, and I can see the black, which means I can go in there and turn it down until I don't see the black at all for an optimal picture. We still see a little bit of black here. That's good. And yeah, we're closer to 50% brightness. Uh, I like to have it where 50% brightness has... Uh, uh, close to 50% brightness should be the 
perfect brightness level so you have up room and down room for when shit drifts in the future. So this tube isn't tired. I'd say it's getting there. It's not tired yet though. It's got some years left in it. It's got an adequate picture and it's higher resolution than I thought it was and a rather strange one. The resolution is pretty nice in here. It's not the sharpest picture. I'm sure it was at one point. 1920 by 1440 is at its peak and it's a bit blurry but you know for something like games that'd actually be you wouldn't notice that blur that'd just be free anti-aliasing like i can read it and stuff it's just a little bit blurry this might be a thing that could happen from weak tube but i think it's a thing that happens from weak capacitators if you look the picture's not stable it moves around with different brightnesses on the screen very it's not too bad they get a lot worse than that another sign of a crt that's getting ready for a nap when the picture gets a lot sharper because you turn down the brightness. So we know it looks kind of iffy at its current resolution. Let's see how it does a DOS like resolution. Huh. Wow. Oh. No. Oh, yes, that's nice. That's nice. Convergence has been off. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. That's actually bright. That looks fucking amazing and DOS actually. Beautiful. That's 400 by 700 there. So yeah, this monitor is gonna get some use. Here's the back of her. Here's the size of her, pretty massive. Can you lift the cover off for me? Look at that properly shielded boxy beast. <laughs> that board seems kind of floppy in there. I wonder what's wrong. Hopefully the problem's on the simple side since I mean, all we got was a degauss. Now, I could be wrong, but I think a daughter board that's not all the way inserted could affect the thing's functionality. Let's put this guy down in the board. Oh my god. It's gonna be great if that's all it takes to fix this. I actually don't want to do a whole lot of work to this thing. Come on, show me the high voltage. nothing i think this video is going on long enough i think i'm going to keep poking around with this thing but i want to get this video out uh time to do actual troubleshooting so this thing does a quiet quick degauss and that's it no power light nothing so i'm thinking i'm going to need to take a look at the power supply see if i can find anything wrong there and i guess just for old time's sake I should make sure that there's no bad solder joints on anything related to the flyback or horizontal output transistor since that generates a lot of the voltages everything needs to run. And then again maybe I should just be looking at the power supply and nothing else because uh, this thing actually has a full legit power supply and it doesn't really look like it's going to be taking the low voltages off the flyback transformer like most things do.